Today we're going to talk about evolution, uh, which should be fun, but a little bit of, uh, let's say, place keepers or mine keepers or whatever we need to do to kind of clean up things. Um, we are sponsored by Neighborhood Nutrition. Uh, we are still sponsored by Neighborhood Nutrition. So if you're interested in helping sponsor this show, uh, please contact us. Uh, we will be divulging lots of nice content. Uh, we'll be teaching people really how to live better, how to diet, how to eat, um, how to change your lives, how to change your health, how to change your health status. And it really doesn't matter how bad it is. Uh, we feel like we can always move the needle. And that's a pretty exciting stuff. Um, we are coming to you from our new offices located in Ada, America. So we have moved to Ada, Oklahoma. And we are so excited about our move here. We're going to be headquartering this show here. This show may be expanding. It may be, you know, we've got, we've got some stuff going on, let's just say. So we're excited about that. But anyway, uh, I'm excited to talk to you guys about evolution today. So if you're a Darwinist, you might not like this one. So you might want to just tune out now. Um, if you're interested in, you know, where we came from and how we develop, uh, I think this show is going to be for you and it should be a lot of fun. And we're going to, we're, you know, I view things in a different way. I, I sort of just have a different view of the world than most people. And I, I don't accept what they tell me at surface value. I strip the bark off everything. And I don't do this in every area of my life, but I certainly do, uh, you know, where science and tech is concerned. Because um, I want to know the answers. I want to know the whys. I don't, you know, I don't care if some teacher told me something or some expert told me something. I'm going to verify that. You guys should too. So everything that I'm telling you is readily verified on the internet, you know, on go to NIH.gov. That's probably the best place and look through research studies. Um, but it's pretty easy to verify what I'm going to, what I'm going to walk you down. This is going to be a little different evolution because this is more of a, you know, an opinion, but I have a substance behind the opinion that I have, which I will certainly tell you guys about. So evolution, what is it? Well, you know, in the, I can't even remember when it was. I think it's in one of the slides I'll, I'll show you here in a sec. And by the way, if you're listening, I'll do my best to aptly describe anything that I show you on the screen so that you will not miss out. So Darwin, whenever he was, the 1800s, um, he came along and basically said, hey, guess what? We all develop from lesser life forms and it looks like, you know, tadpoles you know figured out how to walk out of the ocean and that led to some kind of lower life form that stood up and you know at some point along the way we man evolved from the ooze <laughs> okay and um that frankly is wrong uh that's that's not what we're told uh spiritually that's not what's written in our you know spiritual teachings um, and and it, it just, that doesn't make sense. And I'm going to walk you through this logic here, uh, but I need to kind of take you on a little bit of a journey. So let's get right to it, shall we? Um, and I'm going to do this. Yeah, so there we go. So I can kind of see my screen and you guys can see what I'm looking at. So what I have pulled up right now, ladies and gentlemen, is Genesis Chapter 1, verse 1 through 31. And it's talking about how God really makes the world, right? So uh, verse 20 says, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life and fowl, that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Um, but if you go down here a little bit to where God's really creating the beasts of the earth, so let's let's let me read you some things here real quick. So I'm kind of starting at about verse 24 and we'll probably read to the end or close to the end. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping things and the beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now, I don't know what it means after his kind, but 
maybe there was a notion of, you know, what a cow was. And so he, God made a cow for the earth. Anyway, but, and God said, let us make man in our image. And that's different wording than their kind. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, he, he him, male and female created he them. Wow, it's like Yoda speak there in, in Genesis. So I'll read it again. So God created man in his own image. Now that's different than when it says, and God made the beasts of the earth after his kind. That's different than in his own image. So I hope everybody kind of recognizes that. So we're different than the beasts of the earth. We're different than the plants of the earth. And, and even down here it says, uh, And God said, Behold, I give you every herb bearing seed. W and this is chapter 29, or verse 29, chapter 1, herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all earth, and every tree, which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So again, that's kind of indicating that he gave us plants and um, nuts and things or fruit as our food, right? But we have dominion over the beasts of the earth and the plants of the earth because we're different. And it even says it in Genesis that we're different, okay? Um, so what does that mean, right? So, so let's, let's dial it back a little bit more and let's just talk about, let's talk about life and, and living things. Um, so, so what is life composed of? Well, really life is composed of three different types of cells, okay? So you have bacteria and we all kind of know what bacteria is. And bacteria are simple organisms. They can form from granules, they build, they can form a mouth and an anus, and then they're rod bacteria. And they can get sophisticated, you know, up to funguses and um, even viral viruses, right? Are, are kind of in the class of bacteria, some of them. Um, there's a, a second advancement called archaea, and these are just types of cells, and there's three of them, that's all. So bacteria, archaea, and eucrotic cells. We're mostly eucrotic cells, mostly, but we're also composed, absolutely, we have bacteria inside of us, and, you know, arachia, you know, some of us do, some of us don't. There's some arachia that certainly like methane, that like to camp out inside of us. Really interesting how that correlates to autism, to sulfur, you know, methane, sulfur, and all that. Um, but anyway, uh, there's just three types of cells. So everything on earth is made of just three, count them, one, two, three types of cells. Bacterial cells, arachia cells, or eucrotic cells. So you have uh, you probably have arachia in you. We certainly have bacterial type cells. So like, for instance, what differentiates a, let's say, a bacterial cell from a eucrotic cell? Well, it's the presence of mitochondria, okay? And so you have, in fact, your red blood cells don't have any mitochondria in them, so they could be classified as a bacteria. Your white blood cells do autophagy, so they grab other things and, and kind of eat them. Um, again, that's kind of an interesting bacterial thing. Uh, so we are made up of these different types of cells. You know, what combines these cells into something called a human? Well, that's a whole nother discussion and we'll leave that to another, another day. Um, but anyway, we're a combination of these cells. These cells sort of film film form a cellular matrix depending on what they're trying to be so stem cells will be in our bones and kind of form a cellular matrix that's expressed during our immune or bone building um, blood cells do a whole lot of stuff uh, muscle cells you know so we're, we're just composed of these different types of cells but for the most part these cells are all eucrotic eucrotic cells and we can understand how a eucrotic cell works and what a eucrotic cell likes now, interestingly, how do you get energy? And, I, and I'm just 
throwing you this in there because there's a tight correlation between how we're different uh, from the beasts of the earth and the sun, okay? So the sun is actually what differentiates us from the beasts of the earth and the plants of the earth. So what I'm showing now on the screen is this is just a graph of two different types of bacteria. And I'm showing this to show just how light basically charges um, these protein complexes. So in purple bacteria, you have a protein complex called P870. And guess what? If you hit that with 870 nanometers of light, that's why they named it P870, um, it will energize that particular structure and that structure will get ionic and when it does it will give off energy to do things. So that's kind of the purple bacteria. We've also got a green bacteria over here that's a little bit higher frequency of light, P840, and he's going to absorb light at 840 nanometers and kind of do the same thing. So he's going to step up basically as he absorbs light, energize, and then he's gonna pass on his ions to different reactions to do different things inside of us. But point being, it doesn't really matter what kind of cell you are, you're gonna use light to do things and all cells use light to do things. Okay. So let's get to Darwin. So what did Darwin believe? Well, Darwin believed that we, you know, kind of emerged from the primordial ooze, right? That all life sort of started from simpler life and, um, you know, we evolved, right? So it's uh, monkeys uh, needed to uh, lose their hair and have skin. Uh, and so we evolved from a monkey. So that, that was what Darwin uh, kind of believed. Uh, and, and, and it's, there's some truth, let's say, to what Darwin believed. <clears throat> so like, for instance, you can describe a hierarchy of things, right? So, so we all understand that, you know, there's simpler life, there's more complicated life, there's even more complicated life than that, and there's even more complicated life than that, and it just goes up and up and up and up. And kind of till you get to us, to humans, you know, and we're kind of the, sit at the apex of that. Mammals kind of right under us, right? But, but everything is built that way. So we have a lot of commonality with a mammal. You know, a mammal has a lot of commonality with whatever you'd consider the next rung down. The next rung down will have a lot of commonality with the rung down before that. So that's just the way things work. I mean, we build on structures. One thing is built on top of another. So Darwinism kind of makes sense in a way because we all understand that, you know, the human function is very similar to mammalian function, but there are some core and fundamental differences. So we can learn a lot from studying mammals, but we can't learn everything that we need to know about humans and how humans work. I read studies all the time and I can tell you this is absolutely the case. I mean, you have to know how a mouse works if you're going to read mouse studies and try to compare that to humans or rats or monkeys or bunnies or whatever you're looking at. So anyway, um, <laughs> there's a building block. There's a hierarchy of sort of complication of life as you kind of go up the complication tree, right? And it just makes sense that we'll share characteristics, you know, all the way down to single cells because we run on, on, on cells, right? So we are just a collection of cells. So are we mammals? I'm going to say no, negatory. You are not a mammal. Uh, very much like God wrote in Genesis, you are special. Um, and why do I say that? Well, again, I'm going to read you. So this is from Wikipedia, or this is actually National Geographic Kids, uh, their statement on mammals. Mammals include humans and all other animals that are warm-blooded vertebrates. Vertebrates have backbones with hair. They feed their young with milk and have a more well-developed brain than other types of animals. Well, the with hair thing, uh, that's kind of my first giveaway. So, yeah, I have a little bit of hair, but I don't have a hair like a gorilla. Um, I, I, I just, I'm not buying that. I'm sorry. So, 
what's different between us and mammals? Well, it's the hair thing. And again, it is literally the hair thing. We have evolved where humans have evolved past mammals in that we do something special with our skin that mammals do not. So mammals will produce vitamin D over the entire surface of their skin. So if you have a dairy cow that's out in the sun, again, that dairy cow will produce vitamin D through the entire surface of, of its skin, really despite whether it has you know hair on it or not. And it doesn't really matter if that cow is in you know Alaska or that cow is in Africa, that cow will get adequate amounts of vitamin D from the sun. And this vitamin D comes from the sun, boys and girls. It's not something that you put in your mouth. It's something you have to get in the sun to get. It's super duper important. So we're going to talk a lot about it because this is the thing that differentiates us from mammals. We do not produce vitamin D in the same way that mammals do. That is a physiological, literally physiological difference that separates us from mammals. So if you want to, if you want to go back to Genesis and say, well, prove it, Chip. Well, I just proved it to you. Again, it, we do not do what mammals do. We've synthesized vitamin D in a completely different way than any other mammal. Mammals can live north of, you know, mammals can live in Alaska and not have to supplement with vitamin D. You can't. You cannot live north of Oklahoma without having to supplement for vitamin D. Okay? So vitamin D is the thing that makes us special. It's the thing that makes us human. It's the thing that separates us really from mammals in that, I mean, mammals have vitamin D, but they don't generate it in the same way we do. Isn't that cool? I mean, isn't that neat? You know, and that's a, 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 a proof, if you will, of, of Genesis. So uh, now I'm showing, and what I'm going to pull up now, oh, well, I pulled up the, it's a Harvard study, you know, so it's very weighty. It's Harvard. Um, and it's talking about the need for vitamin D, but it's got this nice little uh, graph or gr uh, picture of this line that runs uh, kind of right through the middle of California. Uh, the northern side of Arizona, the northern side of New Mexico, the northern side of the panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, kind of runs through Tennessee, and just south of Virginia. So if you're north of that line, for instance, if you live in Boston, New York, Chicago, Minneapolis, Salt Lake, Seattle, San Francisco, Denver, St. Louis, or Richmond, Virginia, you get very, very, very little vitamin D from the sun. Now, again, the sun is how we're supposed to take in vitamin D. This is what separates us from mammals. We need to be in the sun, and we have to have our, sun, our skin exposed to the sun but there's more to this story, and, and certainly there's more to this story that I don't, you know, yet understand. I mean, I'm still learning here, too. But this is such a, uh, just no one is taught this, the importance of this. You know, it, vitamin D is super critical to you and I. Um, let's look at, at vitamin D deficiency, okay? So what happens if you're deficient in vitamin D? And how do you become deficient in vitamin D? Uh, wear clothes and stay inside. You might think that, oh, well, I'm by a window every day. Guess what? The energy that you need from the sun, basically the UV wavelengths that you need from the sun, can't penetrate glass. Let me say that again. The UV energy that you need from the sun cannot penetrate glass. So if you're behind glass all day, thinking that you're in the sun, getting your vitamin D, you're not. You're not getting it stimulated at all. Zero, nip, nada, nilch. If you're out in that wonderful tractor in your air-conditioned cab, zero, zilch, nit, zip, nada, no vitamin D for you. You have to be out directly in the sun. And again, it we... I'll tell you an interesting thing that I read when I was uh, researching for this. So 
it was about a war. This was in, and it was Herodotus. So I can't remember where, when Herodotus lived, but it was, you know, 325 BC, mainly about. But Herodotus was examining the skulls from a battlefield of a battle between the Persians and the Egyptians, I think. But anyway, what he noticed was that the Persian skulls, so he could literally like throw pebbles at them and it would break the bones of their skulls. And he did the same thing with the Egyptians and he couldn't break their skulls with, you know, we'd have to get big rocks to be able to break an Egyptian skull. And what they noted was that the Persians from birth always wore hats, wore headdresses. They denied the bone structure in their, you know, cranium uh, sunlight. And by virtue of that, that led to weaker bone structure. So, you know, it's, it's that important. And again, a lot of us are, you know, we've been behaving in a certain way, oops, since we were born. Um, so, you know, can we turn a lot of this around? Probably, but you know, we're not gonna be able to thicken up our skull probably, you know, I've got a hat on right now. Right. So, but vitamin D deficiency is related to pick a disease. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, neuropsychiatric disorders, and I've got this slide up now, but I'm just going to read you a few of these things. So schizophrenia, major depressive disorders, neurogenerative disorders. So uh, what's neurogenerative? Uh, muscular dystrophy, autism, you know, things like that. So, you know, uh, uh, and again, this is high, highly interesting because Vitamin D appears to be this super critical nutrient um, that we need, and without it, we break down. We break down. We break down through bacterial infection. Our immune systems break down. It just appears to be this super critical nutrient that we just don't appreciate yet. And I mean, I'm pulling all this from existing research, so someone knows this. Um, and they probably just don't want you to know it, you know, and how sad is that? You know, it, again, it just that fits the business model, though. It make you sick, get you better, make you sick, get you better. So a good way to make you sick is just deny you vitamin D. And how do I do that? Well, I just don't give you the information. I'm not going to tell you about it. And that and that appears to be what's happened. You know, sadly, I mean, how hard is it for a doctor to say, gosh, you know, during the, you know, June through September, get in the sun between 10 and 2 for 15 minutes every day because um, you store vitamin D. OK, so your body will build it and you store it and you store it for up to two months, I think, if I recall. So for quite a quite a bit of time, you store it in your adipose tissue. It gets stored in fat. Uh, but what other diseases are associated with vitamin D deficiency? Well, again, if you if you have an infection, uh, that infection's not going to heal as quickly, and it may never heal due to vitamin D deficiency. So, respiratory infections, COVID nineteen, sepsis, tuberculosis. If you have heart issues, again, vitamin D directly related to heart issues. If you have allergies, vitamin D directly related to a weakened immune system, which will allow you to have allergic diseases like atopic dermatitis, urticaria, asthma. If you have autoimmune diseases, again, autoimmune diseases directly related to vitamin D deficiency. If you have muscle pain, if you have pain, if you have rickets, if you have osteoporosis, if you have osteoarthritis, if you have skin disease, if you have intestinal malabsorption, including Crohn's and IBS, if you have renal failure, liver failure, nephrotic syndrome, or obesity, you probably just have vitamin D deficiency. Now your vitamin D deficiency may be exacerbated by other things. So it's like, you know, if you don't put oil in your engine, um, little things are going to start going wrong and then big things are going to start wrong, going wrong and then super duper big things are going to start going wrong. And vitamin D looks to be as important as oil to our engine. Um, it certainly plays with the endocannabinoid system, but this is something that it's, you know, and again, how do you build vitamin D? The sun. The sun and cholesterol or what build vitamin D. Now we all are concerned about high cholesterol and the, and the reason for that is that we just eat too often. If you eat too often, you're always making cholesterol. When you're making cholesterol, 
I don't think you can build vitamin D in the same way as when you shut that those gears off when you go into fasting and then you break down that cholesterol. So one is anabolic building, you're building cholesterol. The other one is catabolic, you're breaking it down. And vitamin D is really one of the first things that you break down from cholesterol. But you have to have the sun. You have to have the sun. This is something that we can eat. You know, it's we've got to have the sun. And when we supplement for vitamin D, <coughs> when we supplement for vitamin D, um, we're denying our body some pretty important steps. So there's three enzymatic reactions that happen with the sun when the sun hits cholesterol to kind of build vitamin D or what ends up being vitamin D. Each one of these those reactions produces other stuff. And you literally have, I think they're called defensins, I can't remember, but it, you have these antibacterial guys that right off the first cleave go out and help you uh, with bacteria. And what's wrong with most of us, honestly, what causes most diseases are, you know, dysregulated bacteria. So if we're not producing vitamin D from the sun, we are not providing our body with some pretty important things that it needs to fight off bacterial infections. It's highly interesting to me that and vitamin D is tightly correlated with HIV, with AIDS, with Epstein-Barr, you know, call that what you want, mono or whatever. But these um, basically really hard to kill bugs that like to uh, ride along on our microphages and, and kind of hide in our systems. But vitamin D is tightly associated uh, with those type, type of uh, issues. So anyway... Um, and improving vitamin D improves all of these things. So again, in my mind, if you've got a lot of this stuff going on, it's, it's not like you're gone and can never come back. It, we have a perfect, uh, probably none of us can ever get to our perfect that, that we were born with, but we can certainly get closer and we can certainly move from the states that we're in now. So our body really has three gears and most of us operate in gear one. And again, go back and listen to the fasting and fed uh, chip talks or kind of, you know, the first one um, to kind of get more information on this. But our bodies uh, really have three gears and, and most of us live in gear one. And when we're in gear one, we're not making vitamin D. I mean, it's very difficult for us to make vitamin D, even if we are in the sun. OK. So hopefully you guys are getting this. It you know it's funny. It, it I don't know you know most of my life I've you know relied on the pharma system. I've spent I don't know you know hundreds of thousands of dollars I'm sure on you know pharma for myself and my family over the years. Um, and it turns out that just making behavioral and diet changes uh, can do so much for us. We have so much that's in our control with our health. And every day we just give our health over to pharma. What's wrong with me, doc? What's wrong with me, doc? Give me a pill. Give me a pill. Fix it for me. Fix it for me. And that's not that's not the system God built. I mean, and no offense to doctors. I, I know a lot of doctors. I got a lot of friends who are doctors. But this that isn't the system God built. That's the system man built to get in the way of God. Okay. So God built us a beautiful system and you work in just this magnificent and elegant fashion. But we've got to figure this stuff out. We need to figure this stuff out because our kids are going to die younger than we are. And we can't have that. So I'm not going to let that happen. <laughs> so, And again, vitamin D is a big part of the picture. Big part of the picture. What does vitamin D do in addition to kind of producing these nice little antibacterial things and you know doing a lot of stuff? It really helps with calcium and it helps us uptake calcium. So if you've been told that you're calcium deficient, again, calcium is super important uh, element in our body. And calcium is ionic. It can take on two uh, electrons and then pass those along. Calcium is used in a lot of uh, reactions in your body because it is so reactionary. It's so ionic. Um, 
If you look at calcium deficiency and severe calcium deficiency, again, they follow right along with vitamin D deficiency, right? So if you can't uptake calcium, you're gonna have calcium deficiency. And if you're deficient in vitamin D, you're not gonna be able to uptake calcium like the rest of us, and you're gonna have bad stuff happen. So in calcium deficiency, and I'm just showing this slide that basically has similar stuff up that you would have with a vitamin D deficiency. Um, if you're having trouble, like stool trouble, so like, like let's say your stools are too loose or you constantly have diarrhea, um, that's a lack of calcium, okay? Um, and you can supplement with calcium, which will kind of help some, but you know, it's, it's really, this is relying on vitamin D more than uh, anything else. Okay, so, oh, I've got the same slide up twice there, that's great. So, vitamin D in the body, right? So, so how does this work? Well, UV light hits us, and that is sunlight. If you're wearing sunscreen, this doesn't work. If you're wearing clothes, uh, you know, again, how, on the bare skin that is exposed, this will work, but on the clothed skin, this won't work. Or if you're behind glass, uh, this won't work. But anyway, as UV light hits you, you basically break down, uh, you, it stimulates enzymes to break down cholesterol to form vitamin D. Vitamin D then acts on a number of cells and tissues throughout, throughout the body. Um, vitamin D produces v, the VDR receptor, which is vitamin D receptor, which every cell will express. So it's super duper important to us. So, wow, we got pretty far from evolution, didn't we? <laughs> but this is what makes us different. And, and when, um, again, I, I, just, I don't think we've evolved from anything. I think God made us just the way that, that we are. We might have uh, improved a little bit, you know, since we've been walking around in the earth or adapted more or adapted dietarily. But God made, God is not a poor engineer, right? So God made us a pretty good vehicle. Um, we just need to understand how to respect that vehicle. Respect that vehicle and give it what it needs. So that's what I'm trying to do, boys and girls. Hopefully we're on the right track. If you are having health issues, uh, please feel free to contact me. Um, again, we have a structure that we can put you in. Generally, we can help with most health issues. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physician. I just pass along what I learn and research and that uh, seems to help the body get better. So anyway, thank you guys. Uh, enjoy being here today. Tell Jagger oh. happy birthday. Oh, tell who? Jagger. Oh, Jagger, happy birthday. Cindy, Cindy says to be sure to let you know. I can't see the big, 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 big comments or anything, so I have to go back later and put those in. So happy birthday. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys later. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Chip Talks. Hopefully you